Gain staging is super easy in Logic Pro 10, and I'm going to show you two methods right now. What is going on? It's Mythical back again for another super easy Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Welcome! If this is your first time and you want to learn more about Logic Pro tips and tricks, songwriting and other mixing related stuff, start now by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today I'm going to be talking about gain staging. What is it? All it means is the amount of volume your tracks are hitting Logic's processors. This includes the EQs, limiters, and compressors, meaning basically how loud or quiet the audio is on your channel strip. Okay, so very quickly I'm gonna show you two ways to gain stage your loops and audio and VST instruments using prefader metering and the normalized gain function in Logic. They're both very easy to access and I will say it's important to keep it in the back of your mind when you're mixing and arranging that you make sure all of your levels are set and you're not clipping. It's very easy to get sidetracked and you definitely don't want to be adding any digital distortion into your mix, especially when you work so hard on a song, you don't want the final product to be destroyed by some random track clipping. First thing that we're gonna end up doing is looking at our pre-fader metering. And basically all that means, pre-fader metering monitors signal before any fader movement. And this is signal coming from your VST and going through any subsequent plugin that you have on your instrument track. And the volume and the metering on pre-fader metering, as I drop down the volume, the input signal doesn't change in relation to my volume changes on my fader. However, if I change it back to the default mode, the post fader, there's no volume and there's no metering, okay? so. Why is this important? Well, I'll show you why as soon as I show you how to actually access this. So on your control bar, we go to customize control bar and display and you'll see pre-fader metering checkbox. We just make sure that's checked and you'll see it highlighted up here in this aqua blue green color. And then we should be good to go. So why is this important? So if you have a VST instrument that happens to be too hot or you have some plugin that you're having maybe too much gain, let's just say for instance, you have a gain plugin that you have way too hot for whatever reason and you weren't aware of it. Well, if you have your post fader metering on, all you're gonna do is just drop the volume and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm not clipping. Well, in reality, if you check your pre-fader, you could be actually way hotter than previously thought. So what's reflected on your post-fader and your pre-fader are actually two different things. So now that we've covered the VST side of gain staging and pre-fader metering and my thoughts on why it's important to kind of keep it in the back of your mind, we should also cover the loops and samples that we download from sites like Splice because they're all normalized and they aren't viable to use straight away without doing something about the gain. So in Logic, it makes it very easy to quickly gain stage multiple tracks at once. And all we have to do is highlight the tracks that we want to affect, go to function drop down, normalize region gain. And let's just go with individual tracks, algorithm peak, and let's just drop it down to negative 18. So negative 18 on a VU meter roughly translates to zero. So in the old analog days, this is what they used to achieve that. Now that we've gain staged our audio tracks, let's take a quick listen to see what they sound like now that they aren't completely overpowering our overall track. So let's go ahead and hit play. So as you can see, the peak metering isn't exceeding negative 18, which is exactly what we want. So this is a really good place to start, and I just wanted to share this quick little tip with you guys because I think it's very important to 
always keep in the back of your mind never to clip any of your tracks unless absolutely meaning to do so. There definitely is a time and a place for digital distortion, but overall it's not going to be pleasing to the ear unless you know what you're doing. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and if you didn't, hit the dislike button. Otherwise, I will see you next time.